I found this minimalist leather wallet on the internet and I want to make it better. Now, there's really not any problem with the wallet, but I want to make this edge disappear and also have a little chamfer on the top and also add one more pocket because I think that three pockets are way too few and at least four are needed for my needs. So, let's get to work. I need to reverse engineer this product. And to do that, I need to use some calipers to get some precise measurements of these cards. First, I'm gonna measure the length and then the width of the card and then move on to the leather. Because leather has a thickness, if I want to roll this wallet up, that means that I need to account for this thickness. I really like the design of the wallet, but not so much the color. So I'm going to switch it up and use this dark blue leather. I think it will look great. Now that I have my measurements, I can begin designing the wallet. And here you can see me sketching out these blocks, each of them changing a bit in width. This will account for the leather thickness and you can see me sketching out the card holders and these are to the card's measurements. So I hopefully will make something that is precise. And after cutting it out and rolling it up, you can see the design works beautifully. Now obviously this is paper, so my tolerances are not so tight with this, but with leather and the thickness of it, this will be just fine. I'm sorry it's pretty hard to see, but I'm marking it out on the leather piece and making sure that I waste as little material as possible. Now for the cut. Done. I'm pretty excited if this is going to work, because I don't want to waste any leather. So let's roll it up. It's way harder to crease this leather than to crease paper, so I'm going to use a hammer to make sure that every crease sits flush and is parallel to the crease next to it. Leather is very similar to paper, so it remembers where it was creased, and this quality will allow me to be more precise on the glue up and also to roll up the wallet to a less thick shape. And I think it will look really cool. So here you can see me finishing up all the creases and then rolling it out into a nice sheet that has been creased. This will work. Now for the roll up. The idea is the same as with the paper. So roll it from the end and then finish on this small flap. Here you go. I think it looks awesome. I have one large flap at the top for money and then four other flaps for cards. So this is an improvement because the original design had only three cards. And the whole thing rolls up just like that. It's awesome. Before I can start sewing, it's time for some cleanup. These edges look really jagged and really raw when they are just cut from the leather like this. So I'm going to bevel them with this straight edge and then move on to gluing them onto themselves. I don't have any professional tools, so this is really amateur work, but I think I can come up with something that is on par with the level of professionalism as the original product. I'm using some acetone-based contact adhesive to stick the leather onto itself so that there are no exposed edges on the ends of the wallet. And here is the second improvement. I wanted the large flap that holds the money to have a bit of a beveled edge on the sides because I think that it will be easier to access any bills that might be in the wallet. To make a neater edge I hammer everything down and then you have these two little bunny ears that are sticking out from the corners that I've hammered down and these need to come off. So I'm gonna cut them off with a scissor. You can see it right here. This is the bunny ear. So you cut it off and then you hammer it in place and this makes it really flush and really like a thin piece. I think it looks way better than if I had just left it on. Now I need to do the other side and then I can move on to gluing up the whole wallet. Snip. And here we go, hammer time. All right, so all the preparations are done and I need to glue up the whole wallet. Keep in mind that this glue is really just to hold everything in place when I want to sew it together. So the real structural integrity of the wallet doesn't come from this glue and it comes from my stitches. But the stitches will be added later and I don't want the layers to slide apart. 
So this means that I have to fix everything in place without it leaving any trace. And for that, this contact adhesive is the best tool. I assume that the original product, I mean, the idea of the original product came about as a manufacturing idea. So how to make a leather wallet that is time efficient and that can look pretty and can be sold for a lot of money. And even though that may not be such a popular opinion, I think that when you're manufacturing something at a large scale, you want to minimize every single process. So this process is really time consuming and they probably didn't do it like this. But to make a superior product or to make something that I think looks nice, I need to invest the time into these small steps. On a large scale, this would probably be skipped and be replaced with something a bit more efficient. So like the pre-creasing of the leather would be done at, with a hydraulic press and that could improve the speed of the whole process. But I'm using a hammer and some glue and this will be just fine for my workshop purposes. But also with efficiency you sacrifice a bit with on quality. You can see that I have rolled up this edge which was not rolled up on the original design and I think that this will look a bit nicer. And I'm not trying to criticize anybody but I think that leaving uh, an untreated edge looks pretty shoddy and not that nice. Okay, so now the glue has dried and I can move on to stitching it together. And I think the form is pretty good and the card holders seem to be holding the cards, so that's great. Now the stitch will keep it in place and after that only two more finishing touches are needed and then the wallet is complete. So if you like this video up to this point I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and please comment on what I could do better. Now for the sewing. I've bought these really cheap carbon steel forks for leather and I'm gonna punch some holes through all the layers of the leather that I have glued in place. You can see it's sticking out the other end. I'm gonna sew on these holes. And here's where the originality of the product comes into play. Since this is a very small wallet and the design is good, I only need to hammer in a few strikes and this is over in about 30 minutes. Whereas with other more complex wallets, for example with the cigar case that I've made, I need to invest way more time into these holes. That's one side done. Now I need to move on to the lower part of the wallet, which will hold all the cards in place. And this is gonna be a bit more difficult, since the layers are more prone to falling apart at the seams. But the glue held tight and I managed to finish everything beautifully. What do you think? Did I do it precisely enough? I think it looks great and I think the cards are gonna fit just right, the money is gonna fit just right and now for the sewing. I've added these flaps at the top to make the money easier to get out, so I need to sew these up too. I put on a good movie to watch while I'm doing this since it's gonna take a bunch of time. But I'm using a normal saddle stitch that you've probably seen a thousand times on YouTube. and. This is a time consuming process and you need to get the tension right and you need to take your time with this process because it takes a long time and if you rush then it will look like crap. This is not a hard piece of leather so it's kind of floppy but because I have so many layers and because I'm using this saddle stitch this will add some really needed rigidity to the whole wallet and I think that it will look just fine. If you are not familiar with the process, a saddle stitch is basically a stitch that is made with two needles. You insert one needle at one end of the hole and another at the other end. Then you pull them through, keeping equal tension on both needles and this will make sure that the stitch meets in the middle of the hole and that the stitch will look nice and hold strong. If any of the stitches fail, all the other will keep them in place. Not just because there is some glue between the layers, but because they are friction tied to each other. And this means that it is a really, really good stitch to use for all sorts of wallets. On the last stitch, I just pull it through and then tie a knot on the end. And since this is a nylon based string, I just hit it with my lighter and this will melt it and keep it from coming apart. That's it, all done. 
I think it turned out great looking. Oh wait, I forgot the top. Anyways, I'll finish that in a sec. But just admire that these stitches are pretty neat and tidy and they are equidistant from each other. So, let's move on to the top. Bam. Easy as that. Now that everything is sewn in place, I need to fix this exposed seam at the edge because I think that it looks pretty nasty. So first I'm hitting it with some 160 grit sandpaper, then moving on to 400 grit, and then I'm gonna use some wax to make it nice and shiny looking. And I hope that this will look nicer than just this naked exposed seam. When you first apply the wax it looks kind of whitish, but as you move along and the friction uh, melts it, then it turns a deep dark color and I think that this fits really nicely with the wallet. Okay, after this everything is done and I'm ready to show you the final product. Wow, this was pretty easy. I thought it was going to be harder, but I managed to get everything right. In my opinion, it looks cool. Let me show you.